Today, I'm going to go through four common scriptures twisted to teach the heresy of replacement theology. These are four common verses you'll hear replacement theology heretics twist to try to teach that the Jews, that God's done with the Jews, and that the church, probably the Catholic church they're referring to, has replaced Israel. Here's the first one. Matthew chapter 21, verse 43. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Now, they isolate this verse to get by isolating this verse, they really easily get the idea that God has replaced the Jews. However, if that were true, it would contradict Matthew chapter 23, verse 29, which says Israel would not see Christ till they repent. This happens at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. So they take the verse out of context, they isolate it to make it seem like God's replacing the Jews, and really, he's just temporarily putting them off. He's not permanently done with the Jews. Second one, Romans chapter 9, verse 6. Not as though the word of God hath, hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. And they'll say, see, you know, not all of Israel which are of Israel. See, you know, they, they get replacement theology out of this. Now, they write this verse out of context. In context, Paul is talking about his love for Israel. And even though they are in unbelief, Paul talks about the benefits of Israel and God's promises to Israel through the covenants and all the other stuff. Now, replacement theology, like heretics like Anderson, will often say that God's promises to Israel can't still apply with the current rebellion and unbelief of the Jews, and also wickedness that goes on over in Israel. Paul's is actually refuting Anderson's argument in Romans 9, 6, when he says, Not as through the word of God they have taken none effect, for they are not all of Israel which are of Israel. He's simply saying that a Jew is not saved solely because he's a Jew or an Israelite, because all Jews are Israelites. Well, no, 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 I'll say, I'll take that back. Not all Jews are Israelites, but all Israelites are Jews. I'll say it that way. Uh, just because they're an Israelite or are the physical seed of Abraham does not automatically guarantee them salvation. That's what he's talking about there in context. So, uh, twisting the verse. Another one, Galatians 3.16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made, he saith not, and as and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Now, again, Paul is simply, he's not saying they've replaced the Jews. Paul is simply saying that Abraham's covenant is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the promised seed talked about in that verse. You know, very, very clearly what it's saying. This is in no way saying that Christians have replaced the Jews or the Israelites, and that Jacob's seed is no longer the seed of Abraham. It's saying that Christ inherits the promises and distributes the blessings. That's all it's saying. It's not saying that that the um, that Abraham's seed is no longer the seed of Abraham. And, of course, another common one, Galatians 3, 28-29. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus, and if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Paul is simply saying that a Jew is saved the same way as a Gentile. Jews and Gentiles are both part of the same body if they're saved, the body of Christ. They are one. This is not saying that the Jewish kindred no longer exists, because they'll try to say, see, you know, the Jewish kindred, it doesn't matter anymore. You know, that would contradict Revelation 5, 9 through 11, and other verses in the, uh, that are for people in the time of Jacob's trouble, which clearly show the distinction in the kindreds, and show that God's dealing with the nation of Israel. I mean, it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, Jeremiah 30, verse 7, who is Jacob? Israel. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 says, it's determined upon thy people. You know, thy people, Israel. Um, this is not saying the Jewish kindred no longer exists. It's also worth noting that it also says there is neither male nor female. So by Anderson's logic, there is no more gender. It's just a gender, genderless church then, because it's neither male nor female. What it's simply saying uh, is that you're all one in Christ Jesus. A male is not better than a female in Christ Jesus. A Jew is not better than a Greek. We're all one. And, you know... If some people would say, oh, there's no, no, no more gender roles, because some people would twist this verse to make it seem like transgenderism is okay and that kind of stuff. Even though clear gender roles are presented in Ephesians 5, 22 to 25 and Colossians 3, 18 to 19. So those are four common scriptures that you hear these replacement theology Catholics twist to prove that God, to basically try to prove, prove that God is done with the Jews and that the church, probably the Catholic church is, again, who they're referring to, has replaced the Jews and all this other stuff. Don't be deceived. They have the twist scripture. They have the isolate verses out of context to prove their heretical doctrine. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.